Welcome to the Foolish Kitchen, and um, today is non-cooking, or this video is non-cooking, and uh, let's say third time's a charm. I tried to start this video three times today. Let's see. Um, this morning I made up a um, jar of what some people call spoon butter. It is a blend of well, uh, beeswax and walnut oil, and I just did these spoons. Uh, most of the, I mean, all of these are olive wood, which um, doesn't need it as often as um, other kinds of woods uh, in, found in spoons. Uh, but I'm just going to push these in a basket to dry, and then I'm going to come revisit those and wipe off the excess. Um, so this is still very hot. I Most of the recipes tell you to put it in a, put the container in a um, a bay marie in a in a bowl uh, in a, a pot of water up to the side and then heat it and melt the butter melt it that way. Basically, my experience with that is if any of the wax gets into the water, now it coats the pan and it's a pan that has to get that off. So, uh, what I did was I took a, a beeswax candle stub and I melted it and I got about um, almost two ounces of beeswax. I know, I was a, but I didn't want to go cutting up stuff. Anyways, and then I topped off this 8 ounce jar with walnut oil and I realized when this cools, this is probably going to have a little bit more wax than other people like. Other people like a lot more walnut oil. You don't even have to do the wax. Um, you can, if it's something uh, that, that you want to just keep oiling, you leave out the wax and just keep treating it with walnut oil. Uh, whatever you've been doing, just keep on doing it. Um, I wanted a nice waxy finish because I don't use a lot of these very often. So I want it to um, because it's not going to get washed constantly. It's just going to sit in the container, storage container, waiting for me to use it. So what I did was I heated um, the, uh, I melted the uh, the candle um, in the microwave. I'm trying to remember. It was probably two minutes on high uh, because I did it in a ball jar. I didn't have much problem. It just kind of melted. I pulled out the um, the wicks. Then I put in the walnut oil, which is colder, and immediately it started to uh, congeal and get cold. So, and no amount, of, trust me, no amount of stirring was going to fix that. So, I put it back in the microwave, and then I stirred it again. <laughs> so basically, if you just keep reheating it, you're fine. The problem is, it's very, very hot when it comes out. So just, you know, either leave it in there, or take it out with, it, you know, and leave it aside. You can let it cool all the way down and reform into a. Um, into a paste. Um, I wanted to get tuck, stuck in, so I waited for it to warm, to, to cool to a point where I could dip this in without really scalding myself. And I did these uh, this uh, fork and spoon, which I believe maybe olive wood. I'm not sure. The only stamping is is uh, I believe they are. Anyways, uh, but I did these and um, I don't. You, your tendency, my tendency, is to stick it in a jar, but anything that's left on it is going to end up getting to the bottom of the jar. So um, I just uh, dab this, uh, dab a rag, dish rag. Ooh, I should back that camera off. Uh, dab the dish rag in it in the. I don't want to call it spoon butter in the dressing <laughs> in the walnut dressing. How's that? And then slather it on. Um, put it aside. And then come back in you know half hour or whatever, and then buff it, and then get all out the excess. You do I would with this and a, and a spatula. I do have to to pick out any congealed wax from inside of the tines, um, but then buff it, and it will build up over over time. So it's that the good thing about the walnut oil is it's a hardening oil. It will cure. So um, eventually, I would be able to eat the, eat a salad with vinegar. Or, you know, and it's not going to to get into the um, so into the flatware. So, um, other things that I reason I started this is I had a couple of things I ha that are fresh that I haven't done yet. Um, this is just a well used, well loved um, kitchen fork. Uh, this is probably from the '60s or '70s, I think. Um, Lehman still has these in their catalog. A lot of people do. Oh, your grandmother's three-time fork. Yeah, it's it's. And when you don't want to use your flatware, it's it's the same size as a flatware fork. But anyways, this has been through the uh, somebody's dishwasher many 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 times. So, uh, the happens is the handles they get that dull, 
um, I've been through a dishwasher look. So uh, if it's if it's cruddy, use um, a detail brush. Get in the cracks and crevices. This happens to have um, brass uh, fasteners in the tang, and it's it's not a full tang anyway. But um, so basically, get out any gook that you might see. Uh, if it's you know, give it a good sand. Uh, you're not gonna, you know, you may not want to get out any stains or any burn marks because that kind of ruins the, the history of it or the, 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 the vintage-ness of it. But um, now that that's done and I wipe off any of the, anything, uh, the dust or whatever, I'm not that finicky about, you know, have, vacuuming up sanded dust. <laughs> I've eaten worse things. Anyways, it just um, give that a good going over. Any of raw wood handles, I mean, you've got to figure that when they were originally sold, they had some sort of finish on them in the store. And then over time, it washed off. So basically, this is just going to give you an idea of what it looked like when it was new. So uh, given that a couple of coats, it's starting to cool off. So it's starting to get um, tacky and, and icky or whatever. But it's going to, the walnut oil is going to soak in. So we're going to put that aside, and I'm going to revisit it later and polish off the excess. Um, these are a couple of things that I, I bought recently, uh, not having a real clear idea what I wanted to do with them. I think this was labeled as a batter spatula, and it's possible because, the, I mean, it, I think it's walnut and it was made here in Maine. I don't know what I do with the tag, um, but if somebody had never used it, it was probably a gift, maybe with cookie recipe attached to it. Um, I've actually been using it as a dasher when I wash my wool. So I, I thought that <laughs> I've been ill using it. So um, I'm going to, I sanded it, got any, you know, new <laughs> stains that I put on it. And I thought that this, um, the walnut oil uh, beeswax treatment was a good idea for it because I'm, I pulled it out of the laundry and now it's back in the kitchen. So I might use it for food. So we will use the, uh, this spoon butter as people call, like to call it, but it's, I'm going to have to call it that. It's basically a wood dressing. It's not, you know, really a polish. It's, so it's, you know, the walnut oil, I hadn't had any in, a, in the kitchen a long time because I, I, most of the time I, I, I was just treating my stuff badly <laughs> and, you know, throwing whatever oil is handy on it. But, um, it's not that cheap because it's food grade and a lot of people use it in their cooking. So it was like $8.00 for um, eight dollars for the bottle of 16 ounces that's going to last me a long time it's going to last a lot longer mixed up with wax uh, if we just use it straight you know a lot of it's going to stay on the you know spill in the sink a lot of it's going to stay on the rag um, so by mixing it with the wax it's going to last a lot longer okay we'll put that one aside now and this next one I can only assume is uh, a spatula it looks like a cake decorator something you know somebody out there will have the real name for it I, I have one in metal I know what that one's called um, but anyways it had a lot of uh, staining on it I've been sanding and sanding and sanding it um, I think the edge is supposed to be sharper than this one is and somebody had ill used it has um, the edge the end has started to crack so I'm thinking it had been through a dishwasher a few times um, it's not the water so much as, as when it the wood it the wood will absorb it and then it'll dry out and it'll it's because it's leaving the wood entirely it's not like the oils um, the wood cracks so basically um, you do that enough times and, and you're gonna have splinters so uh, base I've See, there, there's definitely a stain right across there, but I don't want to sand it any further because uh, basically now I'm sanding away, wearing away wood, and it's just not worth it to me. So a couple of burn marks. I think somebody used this to fry with. I don't know. But you can now. It's coated with an oil. I mean, you can use it. for You can abuse these things as long as you get it a good coating so it doesn't become affected. So basically now I've, go I've gooped that all up, and now my hands are goopy. Um, and I'm going to put this aside and let it cool all the way down to a solid again. And if I ever really want to use it as, say, I had something that has, um, like a basket, something that has um, uh, nooks and crannies, I could just put that back in the microwave. Um, that's why I really like these um, these ball jars, food storage tops. Uh, I'll have to label that so I know which that, which that one is. Um, 
so I can just keep, you know, use, dedicate that jar, just keep adding to it. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to, to talk about, so I told you a couple weeks ago, I did not have a uh, pastry blender. So now I have three. <laughs> I know. Well, obviously, I've got the, the one I use, I'm going to be using most for all. It has a plastic handle. I don't think it's Bakelite. I think it's just more modern, but it's these two, the black and the red, are and um, uh, the uh, the Androck made in New York, made in uh, United States ones, and they are in really good shape. Um, oops, I want to mate. So this is <laughs> this is the one I use, and this is the one I I feel guilty about buying, but I wanted it. It was red, and it has a red wooden handle. Um, this wood is this paint. Uh, that's why I can tell it's not very old. Uh, it's in really good shape. It has never been through a dishwasher. It's it doesn't even look used. I don't even think there was a lot of rust on this. The rust would would come in right at the, in the uh, in the the welds and the connections and the pinches. Any place in the metal that that is not yeah i'm gonna have to go after that a little bit more but anyways it um it lives in a drawer and if this was one where the handle was painted and i wanted to keep the paint there there's a, something i would do with that adding the oil would not or beeswax or anything would not help because it would encourage the paint to pop off because it'll get under the paint and saturate the wood and the paint will pop off um, so that was not a vintage one, like the, the pa one, painted ones from the 40s and the 30s, um, you'd want to retain that paint. Uh, this one is um, made in Canada, it's a different shape, I really like it, and uh, it had a bit of um, rust around the bolt, this, there's a bolt running through this and it's tightened at the end, so if it's loose, if it's... Uh, um, if you want to take it apart and get in and clean in between where it joins together, just take a uh, uh, socket wrench to that, take it apart, clean it, put it all back together. Now, this obviously this handle um, was probably sold with a uh, with a poly coating of some sort, and this does not have it anymore. So I know I keep wiping my hands because they grease from the wax, and I need to do something with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cover most of this up and then I'm going to spray it. And I'm going to spray it with, um, this is a Rust-Oleum, but uh, Krylon, I, I like Rust-Oleum better. Um, Krylon does make one, I have it, I use it for different things. But um, this is a clear coat and it's satin. Um, you can use flat if you like. Um, I think the satin is more, more gives it a more... Um, genuine appeal high gloss it just is disturbing it is it just it doesn't look normal um high gloss on an enamel fine but something like this you want the wood to glow i've been using it um today on my garden tools and um the satin is just perfect so um what i'm going to do is i thought that this would work don't laugh Okay, I'm going to use the wax paper. I just had baggies. I don't use a lot of plastic. Uh, I like this wax paper from the dollar store for lots of uses because it doesn't have a thick wax coating. Um, I have both kinds, but I, find, I feel less bad if I'm using lots of this. Anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to just cover the whole thing, and I am not this right now I am not going to get finagly about paint about um, blue taping the corners I actually want the clear coat to coat the bolt because I scrubbed any kind of rust that I saw there and I don't want more rust to appear and I mean this is a coating it's going because this is a non painted item it can always be removed even if you do this and you forget to you know you do it wrong you can just take some acetone, take some, just take it off. Um, that's the good thing about it. It's it's reversible. Um, I have a, a little cast iron trivet here that I've had for decades and because it's it amuses me but I'm got really yesterday I got really really sick of getting the rust out of it because it um, I kept trying to season it, and then it would go in a drawer, and it wasn't going to get it wasn't getting used, and the seasoning would come off, and it would rust, and I just got fed up. And I did was I de-rusted it yet again, 
and then I gave it a clear coat of the satin finish and I am so so tickled with this that I'm gonna not put it in a drawer I'm gonna use it uh, I'm not exactly sure about the uh, the heat temperature for this but I'm not going to use this for anything I'm not going to bake with it. I'm not. It's just going to sit, and I think it'll it'll be fine. Because usually when I'm putting stuff on here, it's not really going to to affect the finish. I mean, basically, I can always spray it again. So there we go. Everything is cut coated that I want to coat. Now I'm going to take this out of the porch, um, prop it up between a couple of clay pots, and then I'm going to spray it. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to come back again, spray it again. Probably going to give it three coats, but they're very, very light, they dusted coats. There are a lot of videos on YouTube. You can see how to do that. So basically, you make a pass, walk away, come back, make another pass. Um, this actually does twist. Okay, I'm not going to move that. I'm just going to... I'm going to move the item and to get into near, but I'm going to move that dark spot to underneath so it won't be seen. So that's going to give me a nice finish, and we'll see you later when it's dry. Thanks. Figured I had to pop these up nicely. So get it coat underneath, other side, and then I'll come back and do it again later. And this is my other project for the day was my dibbler for planting onions and tulips. But that's getting a coat of indoor outdoor varnish. Hi, we're back. Not like there was a commercial in between, but um pulling out the um the things that I've used the, the spoon butter on probably should let them sit a little longer, but um, what I'm hoping to do is see what's been absorbed, see what hasn't, then maybe see what needs a second coat. Okay, here's our here's our fork, um, the kitchen fork. I don't, that's why I got the blue thing out so that you can see it. Um, if it doesn't look obvious in the video, I'll cut something in, but basically it gives it that lovely warm dark color that probably had when it was new and gets rid of that um, the cast that it gets from dishwashing over and over and over again. Uh, what you can do with this dedicated jar is cut off a snippet of fabric and or, and, or paper towel and shove it in there. Kind of like what your mom used to do with the shortening. Um, basically just shove it in there, close it up tight and and just leave it so that anytime you open it, you will have a, a bit of a rag that you've not um, cannibalized something else. And you certainly don't want to put it through the dishwasher. I mean, through the laundry because uh, the wax will heat up and then melt, get all over things. So I'm going to throw this one away that I've been using all day. But like I said, now that these are clean and I just need a, a touch up every now and then, I'm going to throw a little piece of rag in this and use that for exclusively. So remember, that's a... That's a, um, let's see, I used a candle stick. It was shorter than this. So basically, um, there was a bit of a wax candle melted into this jar, and then I added, you can actually add the oil at the same time uh, if you want. Um, and But you don't, you want to put it in the jar that you're going to keep it in. And then I topped it off with the walnut oil all the way to the 8 ounces. So it was probably, I mean, I think this is supposed to be an 8 ounce oil to two solid ounces of wax but since I was going to put it in this jar it had to fit in this jar <laughs> okay and then the other project that we did um, is the handle which I think came out really nice it has a little burnish a little uh, glow to it which is probably what it had when it was new not very thick not that like, loud shiny poly uh, hey I might be plastic look to it um, I did want to get the ends so that the it got into the cracks and crevices so I don't have to worry about moisture getting in there. Um, if you're particular about that kind of thing, you can probably shove some beeswax in those corners because that's kind of one of the other videos I want to do. Basically, any place that you don't want moisture to creep into, once it's, it is totally dry, sh take some beeswax. It's going to warm up with your fingers. No, I'm not baking yet. That's a steel pan that's seasoning. Um, the beeswax will warm up 
with your fingers. Just rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it with your fingers. Get it right in that groove. And the beeswax will fit, keep the water from, from sleeping in there. Now, these are really only kind of dedicated for cutting in uh, butter or, or shortening into things. So I don't see these getting any more than uh, a quick rub. There's no reason to actually wash this. I mean, soak this, scrub this ever again. Um, I mean, I can actually see the line where the acrylic is and where it isn't, but I, that could easily be removed if I wanted to remove it. So, like I said, I didn't hurt it. It's fine. Um, and I'm going to actually probably use that one a lot more than I thought I was. So, thank you for visiting the Foolish Kitchen while I was doing my cleaning.